COVID-19 pandemic has had a devastating effect on practically all industries worldwide. However, the tourism industry undeniably has experienced the most damaging impact this past month due to the inability of people to move from one place to another because of travel restrictions and bans, cancellations of events and festivals, and the apathy to travel due to health conditions. While, of course, we're also talking compulsory health restrictions in several countries. As we continue to battle the virus, it is important to start to think about life after COVID-19 and perhaps even immediately after the lifting of initial restrictions. Well, Nigeria is a peculiar destination. We have before now depended more on business tourism, even though we have huge potential for leisure tourism, given our vast array of tourism assets, including unique festivals and events, amazing ecotourism attractions and rich cuisine. My favorite. <laughs> well, one thing is certain, international and business travel will be at low levels until late 2021 or even 2022, as businesses will look to manage resources after the trying period. Well, domestic tourism holds, however, holds promise for every country. And how do we then take advantage to grow our own domestic tourism? Well, the CEO of Nigeria Travel Week, Efe Awene, is here to answer that question. How do we do that? How can we turn our domestic potential into a thriving tourism industry here in Nigeria? Good morning to you, by the way. Good morning, and thank you for having me. Thanks for coming. So basically, how do we uh, take advantage of our um, domestic tourism? Uh, very simple. With, uh, the, the, first, the first thing we need to do is to look at um, all of our wealth in terms of our tourism assets and then start to think inwards on how to harness them. Uh, we must start from the basics, you know, and that's with a plan. So every destination in the world is um, strategizing now on how to go forward uh, post-COVID-19 um, and, and the lockdowns. But then we must be starting from even um, way before that, because before now we have not even um, implemented any plans in terms of um, our tourism. And so I like to take um, advantage of um, the tourism master plan that was um, developed by the UNWTO and the UNDP in 2006, we must go back to those kind of documents and those kind of um, works that have been done uh, concerning our tourism and look at all of those basics. What are we not doing uh, concerning tourism? What are the structures that we need to put in place? And then what are the assets we need to be marketing? And more importantly, what, how much are we spending uh, to push our narratives? Because the truth is that tourism is show business. And what you're trying to do is let people know what you have and why they should come, come see them. Uh, starting with our domestic markets, which is a major advantage, by the way. I mean, any country that has 200 million people has no business struggling with domestic tourism because it means that you can practically uh, you know, aim at uh, even just 10% and you'll be doing very well. I mean, if, if we have even 1% of our... Of our domestic market traveling around Nigeria, I don't think there'll be any hotels that will have less than 80% uh, percent occupancy rates. And these are very important at these times because people will not be able to uh, travel internationally for a very long time. And so we must start to do all of these things to promote our domestic um, tourism. I completely agree with you. Now, the way I like to look at things, uh, things we do prior to the situation influence what happens post that situation. Now you're talking about, you know, encouraging domestic tourism. However, you know, some of these locations um, around Nigeria, we have very beautiful places. But in terms of management, in terms of putting these locations out as, you know, choice locations to be in, would you say we were doing very well in that area prior to COVID? So at least we can look forward to something even more positive post COVID. To be, to be honest, I think we, we've been doing very poorly uh, in terms of managing our assets, our tourism attractions, uh, so we can do a lot more. But the, the, the good thing is that um, this is um, the job of um, both public and private sector, uh, because a lot of these assets you know, um, belong to um, the states, and then there are lots of other um, components of tourism that you know, are in the, in the hands of um, private sector. For example, recreation and entertainment. In there are lots of private amusement parks, um, 
festivals and events that are privately run. And so these ones we have a lot more control over. So uh, what we need to do is to get private sector working, uh, doing their best, and then you know, pushing uh, government to, to, to play their part as well. But then we need to raise the standards of all of our attractions, and that starts with talking about them, uh, pushing the awareness to the forefront, and letting all of the players who need to do what, uh, who need to play certain roles, start doing their part. Absolutely. And I'm happy you said that because, I mean, at the expense of sounding ignorant about the, the, the tourism riches in Nigeria, I really don't know about there being that many. And I can, if I cast my mind back to perhaps the last time I was on a flight to Istanbul aboard Turkish Airlines or whatever, before the flight even takes off, it shows you these, these mini videos of all of the different tourist attractions in Turkey or what they have, different climbs, beaches, snow, salt beaches, all of these different things. And like, where I'm going is, do you think that we do enough to promote the, the tourism prowess that we have in Nigeria, whether or not there's an issue of its upkeep and maintenance? A lot of people may not be aware that we even have these attractions. So how can we get to a point where we're promoting that a bit more? So, yes, we're not doing, we're not doing enough when it comes to promoting our tourism assets. I mean, uh, back then in 2006, the Tourism uh, Master Plan um, recommended that, you know, Nigeria needs a minimum of $15 million over a period of five years uh, to promote, to market destination Nigeria. And of course, they also um, advised the markets to target, and that is um, the Nigerian markets, the regional um, markets, um, so ECOWAS and then uh, certain parts of, um, of Africa, like South Africa. And then international markets like uh, the Caribbean and where you have a lot of um, the, the Nigerian diaspora influence. So if you're looking at, um, I mean, 14 years back, and they were saying, we needed $15 million over five years. That's about $3 million uh, per year. That's about a billion. You see that uh, when you look at what we're doing today, we're far, 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 uh, we're spending far less than we should be. And, I mean, the NTDC is uh, very poorly funded. So it's, it's big business. When you look at what other countries are doing in terms of promoting their assets, mm -hmm. you, see, you see what uh, we should be doing. For example, look at the case of uh, Rwanda. Mm. That has um, when you watch any football ma when you watch any Arsenal match you see on the Arsenal jersey fly Rwanda, fly Rwanda. Mm -hmm. and what that means of, of course you know football is big business and millions of persons are watching around the world and what that means is you're creating top of the mind awareness you're asking yourself after every match you're sure that there will be millions of people who will go online and say what's this about what's it about this Rwanda and what can I enjoy and that's what you want to be creating top of the mind awareness so that when people think about a holiday. They are thinking about Nigeria. They are thinking. They are asking themselves, where do I want to go? You know. And of course, people will not travel when they don't know what options they have. And that's why people must know. You know, what's available around me? Where can I go to? Uh, where will well um, will be a um, nice, memorable destination for me and my family? You know. And these are the things we need to start to um, put in place at this point. All right. Definitely. Well, FA, I think it's time for us to take a very short break. And when we come back, we will continue our... Oh, we do have... We have a little time. We have a little time, which is good, because I wanted to ask you, in your own opinion, is there a place in Nigeria, or what is a place in Nigeria that you think is a hidden gem that people, not enough people know about that they should be able to go and see what they have there once we're able to travel again? We have lots of hidden gems. And um, the, the important thing with tourism is that really it's, it's really about the experience. Um, so uh, tour operators, for example, um, have a unique creative way of creating experiences out of, out of nothing. And so what you think may not even be a tourism attraction or maybe something that could um, you know, interest anyone could, could, could be a hidden gem. Uh, the, the fact that we have... Uh, diverse cultures, I mean, over 250 ethnic groups in Nigeria, it's, it's already something that tells you that we have so much to offer, because then it means uh, if, if you're um, uh, a Yoruba man, for example, then you have, I mean, 249 or more 
other ethnic groups that you want to explore. You want to see how they dress, how they, uh, how they feed and all of I that. Know. But let's even look at physical attractions, you know, ecotourism attractions. Um, in, in, in the southwest, you have um, Adwawai Hanging Lake. And that's said to be one... You know what? I would just briefly caught you short there, Efe. I like the fact that you mentioned physical attractions and I think we have some of the most beautiful in Nigeria, but we do have to head out to a quick break. But Sudu, stay with us here on The Morning Show. We'll be right back with some more on this conversation. You're still with us on The Morning Show here on Arise News and we have the CEO of Nigeria Travel Week, Ife Awede, here to talk to us about domestic tourism post-COVID-19. Now, before we went on that break, you were telling us about some physical attractions here in Nigeria and how beautiful our culture is. Quite honestly, I feel like we really don't have to try so hard. Right? Every, we have such natural beauty. While some countries have to use it, you know, artificial, we right. have beaches, we have waterfalls, we have landscape. the greenery, we have landscape. Mm -hmm. So tell us some more about this. So, yes. So I, I was talking about the Adoa Wai Hanging Lake, which is... Um, one of only two hanging lakes in the world, and that's in um, Oyo State. Um, when, you, when you look at the southwest, for example, you can do a whole, um, you, can, you, you have a whole route of, tourism um, of ecotourism attractions like the Dore Hills, which is super amazing. I mean, all of that region, they're, they're, um, you have tons of those mountains that are absolutely amazing. I mean, uh, when you look at how much South Africa makes from Table Mountain, you wonder, why we're not making uh, billions from uh, Idori Hills. And then let me talk about our waterfalls. I think if we're doing nothing, we should be you know, making a killing from our waterfalls. Do you know that we have over 50 waterfalls in Nigeria? I mean, we should be selling Nigeria as a waterfall paradise. Mm -hmm. and, and of course, waterfalls are one of the most sought after uh, tourism attractions because naturally, um, like Fela said, who, um, water not get enemy you naturally are drawn to the beauty and calming effect of waters. Now, um, look at attractions, uh, look at places like the Mambila Plateau, for example, where you have tens of waterfalls, amazing scenery, I mean, climate and all of that, amazing. So we have no excuse whatsoever because all of these attractions are right at, at our doorsteps. Then let me quickly also mention uh, wildlife. Uh, this is something that other African countries make a lot of money from. I mean, Uganda and Rwanda charge about $1,500 for gorilla um, um, tracking permits for one person. They're not taking the gorillas away. That's about 500 and uh, over 500,000 per um, ticket. Now, what that means is they're taking advantage of their natural wildlife assets. What are we doing with ours? South Africa promotes um, the big five, and we have all of the big five in Nigeria. You know, um, even as close as Ogun State, do you know we have elephants? Um, last year there was um, the news of elephants that were killed in Idonri. So when you look at all of these assets, I mean, in Lagos, almost every time you hear of whales being killed, dolphins being killed, you know, um, turtles and all of these, these are natural assets that I pull. Um, for tourists all over the world. And we must start to take advantage of these things. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Talking about taking advantage, I wonder how difficult it's going to be to do so in a post-COVID-19 world. We know that to the, to the, is it to the north of the country we have that annual fishing festival? And as an Ogun State native myself, we have an annual festival in Ogun State in Jebude called Ojude Aba, which obviously can't go ahead this year because of COVID-19 and because of so many people packed in one place. So when we talk about being able to cash in on our own natural resources when it comes to domestic tourism, what type of effect do you think COVID-19 will have on that? Well, I think um, uh, COVID-19, whether I like it or not, for, for, for tourism in Nigeria may, may be a blessing in disguise because now we have no choice but to look inwards. I mean, um, the international borders are going to be closed for a while. And even when they open, uh, people will not, be, will not have the, um, what's it called, the luxury of being able to travel for a while. Because for one, most companies will have no leave um, available. I mean, every, most, uh, I, I think um, a lot of workers had to use up their leave allowances for the period of the lockdown. 
And what it also means is that there will be smaller budgets to travel. And with uh, what has happened to the Naira and the, you know, in terms of the exchange rates, we know that it's going to be a lot more expensive to travel abroad. So now we have more people who have less disposable income to do those international trips. We can start to market to these ones and show these ones the opportunities, the um, lovely attractions they can enjoy around, around um, Nigeria. And that's where you have... Um, the work of the tour operators and the travel agents who should start to take advantage and throw products uh, of Nigerian tourism around for people to be aware of. I like that you mentioned tour operators and travel agents because these days everyone, you know, I can just pick up my phone and I can say, oh yeah, of course, I'm a travel agent and I can, you know, help you out with that. So in terms, and I think it's also a problem because oftentimes they give substandard services. So people who would want to have a good time end up with something short of that because the people helping them are not well trained in this. So how do you suggest we can monitor this? How do we know who is a credible tour operator or travel agent from somebody who is not? Well, um, in terms of um, travel agencies, I, I think that's pretty much straightforward. Uh, there's a very vibrant association that, that um, uh, handles um, travel agency issues, and that's NANTA, uh, National Association of Nigerian Travel Agencies. And so uh, there's some form of control for travel agencies. Uh, where we need a lot more work is with tour operators, because at this point, there's still um, not much uh, being done to put that house in, in order. But this is part of what we're doing with Nigeria Travel Week. For example, in the past um, uh, three weeks, we've been having these Zoom sessions to talk about all of the issues across the sectors, because all of, this, all of the sectors of tourism, uh, the five sectors, um, from transportation to accommodation, to recreation and entertainment, to uh, food and beverages, and uh, very importantly, the tourism services, which cover the tour operators and travel agents, they must all work together to be able to make uh, the entire value chain uh, successful. Mm -hmm. Now, so we need to get uh, tour operators to start to communicate and start to work clearly, uh, uh, coherently with travel agents as it works in every other climb. You know, tour operators usually are the ones who create these packages and then they sell it to travel agents uh, for a commission and then travel agents then use their strong network of, of clients to then sell to the public. And because this channel has not been working in Nigeria for, for forever, you know, that's why we don't, we, we don't seem to be able to pass across that message because those channels must work for Nigerians to get to and to buy um, tourism products. And uh, one of those things we're also going to be doing uh, is to publish a list of reputable and reliable tour operators who know what they're doing. Because of course, because the industry is um, very much open, easy entry, uh, you, you, you find a lot of uh, young, passionate people who just um, wake up and then start uh, it tour guide business or a tour operating business uh, by virtually opening um, an Instagram account and, mm -hmm. and voila. But then as much as we encourage them, because of course they're doing a lot, a lot that you know, people had not been doing before now, we must also begin to you know, call them together and help them to get the required training and the required knowledge needed, the skills needed to be able to work so that at the end of the day, you're not um, disappointing clients, you're not disappointing guests, and you're able to truly, truly sell the potential of Nigeria as a destination. Absolutely. Uh, F.A., I know that in the early part of our conversation, you touched on uh, Nigeria Travel Week coming up with what they called a fresh start for tourism 2.0. Tell us more about that initiative, how it works, and how you're planning to implement those ideas. Yes, so... We started out with um, this series of Zoom meetings where we are getting all of the industry players to come together and talk about our issues. So over time, what we have just been doing is to say, look, we have waterfalls, we have this, we have that, even though we're not even doing enough of that. But now we're saying, look, let's come and sit down and talk about this whole value chain. What are we not doing right, especially in terms of collaboration? because we cannot succeed if all of the sectors are not collaborating. And so, what, um, so those meetings, we started from um, a general meeting for all of the sectors, 
and then we've gone uh, to the individual sectors. We've, had, um, uh, we've taken two sectors now, uh, the tourism services and accommodation, and they've been very revealing. They've shown that uh, across sectors, we're not talking to each other. So hoteliers, for example, don't know what tourism attractions there are. And if they don't know, then they can't advise their guests to, um, guests to try these attractions. I mean, every other um, country you visit in the world, you'll find out that in your hotel room, you have those little tips on what to do where or to what to, where to go when, whilst you're in that city. And what it means is that it, it becomes a lot more business for everybody because then uh, if you're planning to spend three nights for a business day, perhaps you'll add one or two more nights so you can then see the local attractions. But here we don't do that. So people just fly into Nigeria and then they fly out because, of course, they are only uh, restricted to their rooms and they're not um, seeing any local attractions. And I that's missed opportunity for us. Really. Yeah, I completely agree. It breaks my heart. I mean, there's so many. You mentioned one in Ogun State. There's yep. a New Yam festival. Let's even go beyond the festivals. A typical Nigerian wedding, whether right. it's a northern or a southern <laughs> or an eastern, it is a whole festival. Mm -hmm. It is. It's that beautiful. So one of the take um, takeaways from that Zoom meeting, if I recall, was... You know, making sure tour operators create a more creative and affordable way to ensure that people can enjoy some of these benefits of what we have to offer. So how, you know, just thinking about it, how can we do some of that? How can we create, you know, creative ways for people to learn about Nigeria's history? Because we have a very rich one. What would you suggest? Well, so it, it all goes back to the tour operators. And that's why we're working uh, very closely with the tour operators. Well, I'm a tour operator myself, so... Uh, thankfully, we have um, we know who are the uh, major players. What we have just not been doing over time is really talk to ourselves and push ourselves harder. And um, of course, the, there's some level of um, support that we need, but um, from from government and public sector. But what we're saying is, we must start with ourselves. We must push ourselves to the point where um, where we can. Uh, before we then get support from, from government. Just like Nollywood created an industry out of nothing. And today, they, they, you know, every government supports Nollywood. So we intend to, you know, start those, uh, start taking small steps from within our, our sector and look at creative ways that we can implement these. Uh, so we're, we're going to be, for example, uh, showcasing all of the, uh, putting together part products that are sellable and you know directly selling them to the hotels and to, to the travel agents. So we've already set up you know those structures where we can now start directly disseminating all of this information and creating more awareness first within the tourism space. Because once everyone in that space understands what our potentials are, then you have a lot more uh, uh, vibe in terms of pushing them out to the general public. And of course, uh, we're also working closely with the NCDC and we've been assured you know, that they're going to support us in whatever way they can. So it means that uh, whether or not they even get more, more, more um, funding from, from government, we're sure that we're, we're, they're going to work with us in looking for creative ways to pass these messages across to Nigerians. We've spoken so much about domestic tourism and for us here in Nigeria to realize that we don't always have to travel out and definitely now that we can't travel out, there's ample opportunity to discover what we have here in Nigeria. But how long do you think it will be for Nigeria to become an international tourism destination for people outside of the country, outside of the continent to think, well, actually, I'd like to go to Nigeria for a holiday, very briefly? Well, um, first of all, we already, um, well, first of all, we must start with, with ourselves because once we build confidence in Nigerians, then it becomes easier to be able to attract international markets because, of course, Nigerians are travelers. So every day you have thousands of people traveling out of Nigeria. Those ones will be our marketers. And then it's easier to say, look, you can come to my country. You will do this, you will do that. At this point, 99% of Nigerians who travel out of Nigeria are our demarketers. They're the ones who will tell you, don't come to my country, it is this, it is that. But once they are aware of what we have, then it's a lot easier for them to say, look, come, come visit, come see. We have this, we have that, and we have that. Now, two, um, we, must, we must look at uh, uh, source markets that are easy, um, low-hanging fruit for us. For example, we have our diaspora. We have millions of, of Nigerians or uh, blacks around the world who very happily... 
uh, want to visit Nigeria. I agree with you, if they like completely. I think in a nutshell, to sum this up, it's investing in the system is the best way to grow that system. Thank you so much, Ife Wene, for joining us here on The Morning Show.